everything. Uh, your father-in-law has suggested that you, you know, delegate some things. Uh, take that advice, and which he did. So there are many things that the Lord taught Moses through that experience. When Peter stepped out of the boat toward Jesus when Jesus was walking on the water, um, all of a sudden he began to sink as he took his eyes off of Jesus and began to look at the storm and the waves. And the Lord says as he was sinking, the point is, is to sort of um, keep your eyes on me, keep your eyes focused on the Lord because if we keep our eyes on the kingdom, that will help us with our anxiety. Worry oftentimes has to do with a specific instance that we're facing of a concrete scenario that might be taking place. If my wife says I'm gonna be home at five o'clock and it's six o'clock and she's not home, I'm gonna be a little bit worried and say, did something happen? Was she in a car accident? I'll try to call her and make sure she's okay. So the anxiety that is uh, produced by that uncertainty is usually related to a specific a set of circumstances. But uh, as we bring our anxiety before the Lord, he says that we are to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. I also believe that uh, anxiety is the fear of being hurt and anger is the result of being hurt. So that can sometimes be a distinction that can sometimes be helpful. Anxiety can also affect us physically. Many people experience panic disorder where their heart races, where they become short of breath, where they sweat, and oftentimes they'll go to the emergency room thinking they're having a heart attack, when in fact they're having this abundance of adrenaline which is being kicked off in their system because of their anxiety and because of their apprehension. And those uh, situations require medical intervention uh, and medications can help calm a person down and then steps can be taken to uh, deal with the triggers that oftentimes lead to panic attacks which is a subset and of a more severe case of anxiety issues. That was a great video. I enjoyed it. Very uh, factual. He, very factual. And I'm glad that he brought up um, the biblical aspect mm -hmm. of anxiety. And that lets us know that this has happened from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. everyone experiences anxiety. Mm -hmm. yes. Everyone has had a, a moment where they felt like they're, it's not just butterflies in their stomach, but also, you know, your heart racing, you're breathing yes. heavily yes. Um, because of a certain situation. Mm -hmm. But always know that God is always with That's us. That's right. And the problem comes when we try to sweep it under a rug mm -hmm. and pretend, put on a face mask, and then we have problems. Exactly. And um, that actually leads to one of the questions that uh, I received tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, just again, just as a reminder, um, this is our discussion uh, session. So if you have any questions, if you're on uh, Facebook, uh, please add those to the comment section. Mm -hmm. If you're on YouTube, please add that into the chat and we'll get those addressed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the first question um, that I have is, uh, why do you think many Christians have a difficult time discussing their mental health issues in a church context? Well, I think we kind of touched on this one other night before and part of it is mm -hmm. um, we all wanna be accepted. And we don't want to be seen as somebody that's different, mm -hmm. uh, not healthy, not a, not a good person to be around. And so there's a little fear that we'll be rejected. Mm -hmm. But we have to face fears. Those people that you are afraid of and you're afraid of their opinion, they have just as many fears and hangups as you do, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. But they hide it very well. Um, the other thing I think with the reason why we don't talk about it much in the church is that we really haven't gotten a basis or knowledge, a factual knowledge of what to do. Not just how to talk to somebody else, but even how to deal with our own. And hopefully tonight before we end, we'll talk about some things that we can do spiritually and physically to make us feel better. And that's a great point that you bring up. If you're not equipped, what can you do? Um, it's great to be that person to lean on, to mm -hmm. um, have a listening ear. Um, so, you know, if someone does approach you, Yes. with an issue, um, at least you can take the information mm -hmm. and then um, give them some type of, you know, feedback or direction as far as yes. 
the next step. It's also very much okay to say, you know what? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is I care about you and I'm so glad, I'm so glad you um, felt comfortable enough to share that with me. Mm -hmm. And you can either pray with that person and, or, and then, or you can go and say, you know what, there also is help. There's an 800 number that you can call. But let's also, let's just talk about it. Let's talk about what's bothering you. And let's see if we can brainstorm and see if we can come up with some ideas that'll help. And after you pray and leave, you go back and do some research. <laughs> Let's see, what can you do? Talk yeah, to some other what, people. How can you take it to the next step? Yes. So, prayer is all, always yes. needed. Mm -hmm. Always needed. So let's talk about what are some things that um, you can do to help alleviate anxiety? Having a healthy diet is a major, mm -hmm. a major one to you. Uh, yeah, but I think the first step is to figure out why. Mm -hmm. What is causing the anxiety? And once you've realized or th thought about what's causing it, and a good way to determine what it is, if you just maybe drew a, a line, a straight line that was represented your life, and you might start from birth or in, um, high school, college, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then along those life changing moments, mm -hmm. what happened at this time? Did something happen? And go right straight through your life. And then when you do that, mm -hmm. you say, you know what? I didn't realize I've been holding on to that. I need to let it go. So you can either pray and ask God to help you get over it, which is great. That's always one of the first things to do. But you also want to, if somebody has hurt you, number one, forgive them. Mm -hmm. That's the first. Let go of the, the, the hurt that's in your heart and the blame that's in your heart because it's probably making you sick. And that's, that's key because... Forgiveness is not about the other person. That's right. It's about you. It's about you. It's about you because you can't hold on to grudges right. and expect God to, to bless you or you to be a blessing to someone else. Yeah, because he could really hold a grudge, couldn't he? <laughs> Against <laughs> all of us. We don't want that. <laughs> no, we don't. No, <laughs> we no, don't. no. He's too loving for that. But, um, but that gives you peace within your heart and your mind yes. Uh, yes. when you forgive someone. Mm -hmm. So you don't carry that into the next relationship right. that you encounter. And then once you've identified those problem areas in your life where you really were hurt or something traumatic happened to you, then you can go and you can say uh, something like, and you need to verbalize it. We really need to mm -hmm. not just think it in our head. We need to verbalize it, get it out. And if you have a journal, we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. If you have a journal, then write it out in the journal. Um, I was so hurt when so-and-so did whatever. Or I am never, ever going to allow that to happen to me again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to get it out to verbalize it. The more we hold it in, the harder it is to heal. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So recognizing yes. that you have a problem will help you lead mm -hmm. to the next step. And the cause. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may not know the cause because there's some other causes of depression besides just an incident. It may be some, an, in, an incident that happened in our childhood mm -hmm. or our adulthood. But, you know, it also might be, an, and we don't think about this a lot, but it also might be the result of an actual physical condition. Okay. Okay. I, I wrote it down because I don't want to forget. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are some physical conditions that, that tend to cause us to be, be depressed or be anxious. One of them is if you have high cholesterol, if you have a problem with diabetes, you have hypertension, maybe you've even had a head trauma. Okay. Okay. And um, an inflammatory disease. Also, postpartum syndrome. Yeah. When, when, I, when you say the word, I automatically think about being depressed, but in all the, and severe depression. Mm -hmm. But when I think about depression and anxiety, I don't think about postpartum syndrome. Right. And then you also have, for ladies, the premenstrual, um, the premenstrual cycle, because as ladies, we know, honey, you can be really, really depressed. You can almost just be crazy. <laughs> And you need to get though and figure out a way to make those cycles not be so much sharply up and, and, and deeply depressed. Mm -hmm. And so we work on those kind of things. But there actually are um, physical, and there are, there are others, but it's just, those are just something I wanted to mention. So what we would do if we recognize that 
we have physical issues that are causing us to be depressed or anxious, then what do you think we need to do? We need to go to the doctor and get some help, right? Yes. And there's also some things we can do. We talked about, we were going to mention that before. Um, exercise, you mentioned that. Yes, just taking a walk around your neighborhood. Exactly. Um, if, you know, you have a, a outdoor trail, mm -hmm. you can go out to the trail, even though it's cold outside uh, on a warmer day like today. Yes. Um, it was sunny and nice here in, in Saginaw. Um, you could go on the trail and just take a walk just to yeah. alleviate that stress. Or in your living room. Yes. You can do exercise in your living room or if you have a basement or mm -hmm. you have space, do some stretching exercises. Yes. That really helps mm -hmm. as far as alleviating, um, you know, the buildup of, of stress or anxiety. Um, so those are just simple things that yeah. you can do. But Melissa, help. I got something. Did you know, did you know, girl, that they say that black folks don't go outside in the wintertime? <laughs> and don't do activities. Well, I'm here to say that that's not true. Mm -hmm. You can try downhill skiing. If you think that your bones are not quite up to it, try cross country skiing. Plenty of seniors do that and they enjoy it. Get out, like you said, on this, and, and go for a walk. Listen to the snow crunch, take some deep breaths. Mm -hmm. Just doing that will help. And if you've got little kids, if you've got little small children, Get a toboggan, find a hill yes. and go down the bottom. Yes. yes, and don't just send them down the hill, you go down with them. <laughs> we, um, there's a great toboggan run in uh, Battle Creek, Michigan. And I had said I was not gonna go down that thing, but you know, the kids were with me, said, come on, Miss Bobby, let's go. I said, Lord, help me. You promised to be with me through everything. <laughs> so we got on this big, long toboggan, probably about six feet long, and we all intertwined legs and feet and they, moved the hatch and we went down and down and down. I was counting. When I got to 12, we still went at the bottom. Oh. I said, oh Lord, Jesus, get me out of this. But you know what? I got such a rush. I went down for the rest of the day and we kept going down. <laughs> so that, you know, try something new, try something yes. different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Um, again, you don't have to plan this big extravagant yeah. trip. Um, there's a lot of things to do locally mm -hmm. uh, here in Michigan. It's a beautiful state. Yes. Um, there's a lot of things to do outdoors, even mm -hmm. in the wintertime. So yeah, there's still parks that are open. Yes. Yes. So we are going to go to our next video. Um, and it's called the search for fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for fulfillment in the right places or mm -hmm. the wrong places? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and go to that. Going through college, I didn't really have much of a plan, in all honesty. I started out in nursing and then transitioned to ministry and then counseling. And I finally settled on a major because everyone told me that it was something I'd be good at. I wound up taking a job in medical recruiting. As the months went by, it got difficult going every single day. And my boss would ask how I was doing and check in on me. and I always tried to be upbeat and tell her that I was doing great, but inside I really wasn't. About six, eight months in, I started having these anxiety attacks because I wasn't happy and it wasn't my passion and it wasn't where my heart was at. And that was difficult for me because I've never really had a passion in the first place. So I didn't really know where to look or even where to start as far as finding something else. And so my time with the Lord started to suffer. Um, I really wasn't reading, praying, spending time with the Lord, having quiet time. It just wasn't something that was appealing to me and everything felt kind of empty at that point. It got to a point one day where my boss asked me how I was feeling and I was really honest with her that I just was not happy there and I, I couldn't continue. I gave her some, some notice a few months to find a replacement and I started to disconnect from the work that I was doing, disconnect from my coworkers, disconnect from everything. And so that resulted in me actually being let go ahead of the time that I was supposed to leave that job. In the time of not having work, during that time was really when I got to spend time with the Lord because I had kind of undivided attention. So it allowed me to really learn what it is to be still, having that time to read and pray and study. And the more I did that, 
the more peace I started to feel, even though my circumstances were kind of all over the place. I still had no idea where I was going. I still had no idea what the Lord had for me. I went through college and I felt paralyzed. And then I went through a year, year and a half of working. And at the end of it, I felt the exact same way. And right now I'm in a place where the Lord is starting to make things a little bit more clear, but it's still also hazy. But I think that the Lord has been so faithful and he has worked so well in supplying me with peace and contentment, even though I'm not sure. So it makes things a little bit easier to deal with, even though I still don't really have a plan or idea of what's coming next. All right. Another great testimony of how someone has overcome. Yeah. And again, it's another example of the fact that there are many of us who have something that we have to deal with. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I know before the video, we touched on uh, the health aspect. What mm -hmm. can we do to eat healthy to help alleviate anxiety? To, to eat healthy? Okay. Yes. Well, if what you go are some things that we can eat? Um, <laughs> I think in the study that I've done is that the, the more you eat the, um, the green foods, mm -hmm. the green foods. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I mentioned during one time we were talking about a young man who had a real, he had severe, severe depression. And he found a regiment along with exercise. He found out that in the morning, if he did a, if he juiced and he used greens or fruits and nothing artificial, he may have thrown in some nuts, some dates, and um, he felt charged. He felt not only physically good, but his mind felt good. And in fact, I'm glad you brought that up because mm -hmm. there was a study that was done by Dr. Neil Nedley um, at New Start, and he was saying that they, during the study, they had people who had never taken meds before, mm -hmm. but they obviously needed some help with depression or anxiety. And after the number of weeks, they found out the number one thing that helped the most was nutrition. Mm -hmm. And then the second greatest thing that helped the most was their frontal lobe. In other words, the way they thought. They needed to change the way they, they thought. And the, one of the things he said to change the way you thought, you can't just say, I'm going to flip it off. Mm -hmm. You might want to start the day, like we've talked before, you might want to start the day out, making sure you're praying to God, you're surrendering your, your heart to him, you are surrendering your, your plans for the day to him so that you're actually going, but not by your plans, but his plans. Absolutely. And so when you start out the day that way with God as your partner, that helps change the way you think. They said the other, the third thing that really helped them uh, was to acknowledge addiction, addictions that they had mm -hmm. and then to uh, work on removing those. And the fourth was a sleep life cycles knowing that it's not just sleeping, but recognizing that even throughout the day, our body has a rhythm. It's used to eating at certain times. It's used to exercising certain times. And so when we follow the pattern that our bodies uh, do best at mm -hmm. and get plenty of sleep at night, uh, one of the things I found out was that um, that helps me sleep is to turn on the... Um, gentle rain and thunderstorm. Okay. Even my dogs sleep all night long. <laughs> and so we've had a good time the last couple of nights, but you find out what works best for you. Absolutely. And uh, those are the four things that really helped. Yes. As far as um, going back to just, just the food aspect, um, you can drink chamomile tea. Yeah, you can. Chamomile yeah. tea is a soothing um, herb that yep. you can uh, drink, uh, but it calms your body down. Mm -hmm. um, so um, if you just had a bad day, instead of Drinking coffee, oh <laughs> which is a dep depressant that people don't really realize yes, it is. It is a depressant mm -hmm. and it is addictive. Yes. Um, also, you want to avoid alcohol, too. That's a depressant yes. and it's addictive as well. Um, but chamomile tea is a great um, beverage that you can mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. especially if it's time for you to wind down. Um, if you're having trouble sleeping, that can help calm you down mm -hmm. so you can prepare for a good night's sleep. Also, having lavender. As well. mm, yeah, that is very common. Um, a, a lavender yes. essential oil is mm -hmm. good to have um, if you have a diffuser or mm -hmm. um, 
if you uh, can find uh, like a linen spray thing and things of that nature that you can spray on your pillows at mm -hmm. night, um, mm -hmm. that is a natural uh, relaxant as well. I think it's important for people to, you know, do the research, find those things that work for other people and find the one that works for you. And it might be one or two. I have a friend who was doing one thing. For example, she was taking melatonin at night and it worked. Melatonin worked for the first, I think, few nights. And after that, it didn't work very well. Okay. So we need to study, be, be wise, be, learn what works for you and your body. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we talk about being healthy and eating things that are healthy. It's eating things that are healthy, eating things at the right time. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes if people are not sleeping at night, it's because they're going to bed with a full stomach. Yes. So try to, try to not eat at least four to five hours before you go to bed. Try not to drink at least three to four hours before you go to bed so you won't want to have to get up in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. So those are things that you can do. Yes, and okay. Having a, a healthy diet, eating the right mm -hmm. at the right time, mm -hmm. um, selecting foods that will calm you naturally instead of using uh, caffeine mm -hmm. or alcohol, uh, because those can lead to, again, addictive behaviors, right. which we'll talk about addiction next week. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to avoid anything that's going to harm you. Hey. Um, so go oh, ahead. I'm no, sorry. No, oh. <laughs> um, I was just going to touch on as far as what you talked about next, as far as having a positive mindset. Okay. Um, having a positive mindset can change your whole outlook on life, starting yes. out with prayer, yes. starting out with um, just with a clear clear mind when you, when you get up and start going. You may be uh, worried about things that may happen for the day, but guess what? You can handle them a lot better yes. by yes. Um, just saying, choosing to say, you know what? This may be happening right now, but guess what? It's gonna mm -hmm. get better. Mm -hmm. That's right. And never, we can never, ever weary God. We cannot weary him at all. We cannot need him and he's not there. Mm -hmm. He's always got his ear attentive to us. He loves us so much. He's got invested so much. He wants to spend eternity with us. So, you know, go to him and know that he's a trusted friend and then try to find a friend that you can, that you can um, confide in, that you can talk to. And I just want to real briefly talk, touch on diet again, then I'll, we'll get off of it. Okay. Um, some people, especially in the evenings, I've heard of people who are mixed different foods up for their last meal at night. And what will happen is the, the fruits will may try to digest first, and then you have the heavy stuff. So you don't want to mix the two together. If you, but now I also want to let you know that for some reason when you juice, that's not an issue. It's just when you're chewing and you have and the whole foods and you have to and they have to they have different digestive times. But when they're juicing, they they're they just go through, right through. OK, I Thank did you. not know that. Well, yeah. OK, <laughs> wonderful. You're learning. <laughs> We're all learning. <laughs> OK, so I just um, just wanted to touch on um, just back on just the outlook, just having yeah, that oh. positive outlook, because that could really change your mm -hmm. your life it mm -hmm. really can if you're always thinking of negativity yes if you're always thinking of what can happen what can go wrong mm. you won't overcome mm -hmm. yeah and i think if we if we remember that we really are three part it takes we have three parts of us mm -hmm. that make a whole we have our body we have the uh, spirit or the spiritual part, and then we have our mind. Mm -hmm. And whenever one is out of sync, believe it or not, the other one is also. Absolutely. So if you're out of sync with God, guess what? You're, it's going to be a little bit awkward. It's going to feel awkward. You're not going to feel at peace if you are um, not resting, or mm -hmm. and so you, your body can't rest, or you're, whatever, you're not getting them out of exercise. You, you really won't prosper the way God wants you to prosper. Mm -hmm. So when we look at ourselves, let's, let's remember that we are a three component person. And so let's work on or ask God to help us work on each of those three components. And we need to be careful what we put in our mind because what's in comes out. What's in can also be so negative that um, even though we're eating healthy, even though we're going to sleep, it can change our, it can turn off the good, the good thoughts that we should have. So 
and what we should say to ourselves in the morning, you know what, I'm going to have a good day today. God has already got this day planned, mm -hmm. and you've already had worship, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. So let's, and I just looked at a video, and there was a study done some time ago. They said that in the Japan, there was a river, and they took a picture of the water in the river, and it was all cloudy and murky and, and mucky. Okay. They asked the people to begin to pray and pray that the water would be clear. They checked it like half an hour later after their prayer. The water was clear as crystal. And I said, hmm. But then there also was another study, and I did this for my plants, and it really is true. Okay. If you don't, uh, if you say negative things when your, plant, when your plants are there, and constantly you're saying negative, down, downing, down putting statements about the plant, you're ugly, or I hate watering you, you bother me, that plant will die. They actually had two plants side by side. Uh, the one plant they spoke very negatively about. The other one, they not only watered it and, get, and fed it like they did, they did the same thing to both of them, but they began to speak positive words. Thank you so much. You look so pretty. You're, you're beautiful and green. You're lively. I just, I just enjoy you. I just love the smell. You just smell so clean and fresh. All positive things. That plant survived. They showed a picture of the other plant and it was brown and withered. Wow. So it's, it works the same way in our own soul. Yes. Yes. When you talk to a friend, you want to be positive to them. You want to find somebody who can be um, positive about you, but then you be positive about yourself. Absolutely. And I don't know why, but I don't know about you, but I've heard, I know with me, that's hard to do. It's almost like I'm trying to boost myself up or whatever, but that's not it. You're just really reaffirming the fact that you are God's child. Mm -hmm. He loves you. He made you perfectly. He made you just the way he wanted you. He wouldn't have you any ways different. And that we just need to thank God for that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to our next video. All right. And our next video is actually anxiety in friendships. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and uh, go to that. So I just moved to a new high school and was trying to make friends and I happened to just meet this really awesome girl and we clicked right away. Someone came up to me and was um, gave me just some information about my friends uh, and her family that I just didn't think were true and um, I kind of just thought it was just really um, awful to say. Um, so I brought this up to my best friend. I wanted her to know and I wanted you know her family to know that someone was saying something about them. The family said that I was making it completely up. They assumed that I was the one that was saying stuff and that it was my fault um, and that I was lying. At the end of it, our relationship hasn't been the same and so it really just hurt me and it made me feel like I was rejected from not only a friendship but from a family. Based on that situation that happened, it kind of made me not want to get close to anyone because I always kind of thought that I was the problem or that I would just be misunderstood again in the situation. And so I just didn't want that to happen. Pretty much every relationship after that, I kind of just walked into it walking on eggshells. I didn't want to really offend anyone or let people down or to be judged um, based on something that I was saying. I can remember one time being invited to um, one of my friend's birthday parties and I was like, okay, well, who's gonna be there? Do I know these people? And she was just like, just come. Whereas I used to just jump towards those things, I was very scared and standoffish. And I completely backed out because when I looked at the friends list or the invite list, I didn't know anyone there. And I just became really overwhelmed with like, just the fact that I would have to go into a new space and um, either put on this fake me or um, just have to go through that same process over again. So it really affected my relationship with the Lord. I wasn't really able to go deep um, like I wanted to, um, just a fear of not being enough, of not being received well, or um, just being condemned, honestly, and not um, being accepted by Him. And although I could like read, you know, in the Word where it says that and could feel it and sense it, um, for some reason I just couldn't get past um, just that wall or barrier of not being surface level with him. I really wanted intimacy, but I just couldn't get it. I think 
When I started going to uh, Gateway, like just having a mentor um, to kind of walk alongside me in some of those things and really to kind of highlight some of the things that she saw in my life. And going through that, I really was able to like dig deep and see some of those issues and uh, kind of get to the root of what was going on and why I was so like nervous around people or um, why I didn't let people come into my life. After that, I kind of was just really open about it with most of my friends. And so um, my two best friends pretty much, like if I, I would have to tell them about like where I was getting invited to and they'd be like, okay, so you're gonna go to that and you're gonna go and you're gonna be okay. And they just really encouraged me um, and in prayer and um, just in my quiet time with the Lord, he really just gave me the confidence that I needed and just the reassurance that um, I am accepted in him. And so um, it's just been really great and it's obviously an ongoing process. Okay, that was a good video as well. They're all good. <laughs> I, I love this uh, series that we're doing because it, it brings real facts out, real experiences out yes. of people and um, having the right people around you makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Going back to what we were discussing before, are you speaking life or are you speaking mm -hmm. negativity, mm -hmm. which makes a, a huge difference in mm -hmm. someone's lives. Mm -hmm. And is that spilling over into your other relationships that you have as well? Mm -hmm. And if someone is speaking negative negativity to you, you know, just choose not to be around that person. Find somebody that's positive mm -hmm. and uh, be associated with them. Be with them. Absolutely. So that goes into our uh, next question. I'm going to tie it in here. Um, when you have to put too much pressure on yourself or why do you think we tend to put um, self-inflicted pressure on ourselves? And I think... Go ahead. No, sorry. Right. I was going to say, um, I think sometimes um, we live in a society which we focus on always being the best, mm -hmm. always being um, mm -hmm. in the forefront, um, being independent. Um, I have, you know, you can list as far as all of your accomplishments. Mm -hmm. And um, that takes a toll on you um, after a while. Um, you may not think that it does, but it, do. it does. It does have a direct Mm -hmm. um, impact on your life. Another thing is that when you're already depressed, the first person you're going to blame is probably going to be yourself. Absolutely. You know, you're going to start that downer, silent, maybe not so silent conversation with yourself. You know, I'm not pretty enough. I didn't work hard enough. Mm -hmm. I don't have the right clothes or they don't like me. They can't like me because whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe my teeth are crooked. Maybe my nose is too big. My, I don't have a nice smile, whatever. And so we'll blame ourselves and say, oh, I'm going to, I wish I could change this. Or maybe if I do this, I could change the way somebody acts. Mm -hmm. And to tell you the truth, we only have control of ourselves. We cannot make somebody love us, mm -hmm. appreciate us or whatever. But I found that generally when you're not anxious and you just go on about your business, then people begin to notice Oh, you know what? She must have it going on. She's really confident. Yeah. And they don't know. They just, you're really not, but you're just going on about your business. You're not allowing the problem to get you down. You're not allowing the problem to stop you from having fun and enjoying life. Absolutely. So you're not trying to put on this facade. Exactly. Anymore. You're not pretending. You're not pretending. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to touch on this as well. Social media has caused an increase of this, especially in our young people, uh, feeling like they need to measure up yes. um, by the amount of likes that they have mm -hmm. on their mm -hmm. posts. Oh, I only have five likes. Oh, nobody like, likes me. Oh, yeah. if one, the next day you may get a hundred likes and then you feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. too it much is for pressure, a young person. Especially for a young person. And many times there are negative comments on there and nobody knows, but the people who are in that, in that room or, or getting um, access to that feed. And rather than look at that thing, when you start to be negative, click that thing off. Yes. And just defriend that person, <laughs> remove them. Um, because that, you don't have to listen to that. Right, because dwelling on those negative comments, it could be by someone you don't even know, but mm -hmm. yet you're, you're taking that in. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, some people internalize it. Yes. And so you, it just festers inside mm -hmm. of you until 
you blow up. Right. And then at that point, it's too late. Yeah. So, um, you know, we shouldn't rely on what other people think. Yeah. Um, we should only go by what we set for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just what it is. You know, yeah. you have to have strong self-esteem to do that, though. You know, and there's a beginning. There's always a beginning step. If you don't have it, just mm-hmm. take one step. Yes. And that's fine. The other thing is, even as adults, I know young people have problems, but adults do too. And adults, when you get on Facebook, you see somebody and thinking, who is that? Mm-hmm. I saw them last year and they didn't look like that. <laughs> and sometimes it's good. And, and most, it's, it is what it is if people choose to do that. But it's almost like they're their own show. Mm-hmm. They've got to dress or pose in the most sexiest pose or in a very... Um, suggestive pose to get attention to say, well, you know, I'm all that in a bag of chips. Well, think about it now. What are you going to say? How are you going to feel if people don't think that way about you? Mm -hmm. You know, so instead let the outward appearance be one that's, um, that's attractive. And certainly we all want to dress attractively and not based on anybody else, but based on what we, we think. How you feel inside. Mm-hmm. If you feel good in your pink polka dot outfit, wear you know, wear it. If you feel good in something else, wear, wear it. It's not about yeah. impressing anyone else. Exactly. Um, it's about how you feel mm-hmm. inside. Or make it, or making people um, notice you. Say, hey, y'all, look at me. Mm-hmm. Look what I did. Look what I did today. Yeah. And that's the flip side of it. Exactly. You may not, um, you know, be a, a person who um, may sh- want to showcase everything, mm-hmm. but there are people out there who want to do that. Maybe yeah. they're hiding something. Maybe right. they don't want to um, for you to see the real person inside of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a two-way street yeah. there. So then uh, the question comes up in my mind, then how really do we deal with anxiety? What is the first step with anxiety? And one of the videos pointed out very clearly, um, I'm not sure it was Dr. Baker or who it was, he said, just if you feel really anxious, just stop. Mm-hmm. Take a deep breath, yeah. hold it for a few seconds and just let it out. Absolutely. Let it out. Take another deep breath, purse your lips and just let it out real slowly like you're whistling but not making a sound. Take another deep breath and then just relax your body. Just relax yourself. Mm-hmm. You can even close your eyes and just picture a, a beautiful place. The other thing, if you're anxious about something, identify what you're anxious about, like we talked about earlier. And once you've identified it, you've taken a deep breath, then go on and say, you know, can I, what's, what can I do to break this cycle? Mm-hmm. How, what can I do to, and then what can I do to make myself feel better? Whether it's journaling, exercising, um, mm-hmm. cooking, whatever it is. For some folks, I know one lady, she um, deals with um, anxiety and even depression by cleaning. Mm-hmm. I like to have her come to my house, but <laughs> yeah. and but that she does. But in her house is very spotless because when she gets anxious, she does take a deep breath, but then she goes and she starts to clean. When she's done, she feels better about herself, and she's no longer anxious or depressed. Absolutely, she's too tired. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 again, these are just suggestions. Yeah. yeah. But also, if you know that um, you are dealing with severe anxiety, where is leading into having panic attacks. Yes. Definitely seek, seek professional seek help. help. Seek, help. seek your uh, physician. Yes. And um, also uh, seek treatment with a therapist as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we are going to show our last video, which is a, a message of hope. A message of hope. Yes. Oh, we all need a message of hope. So this is Overcome Your Worries Through Mm -hmm. God's Grace. Well, before we go to the video, I just want to remind you to put your questions in the chat. Send your questions to us before, you know, hopefully even before this last video. We may not get to it tonight, but we will get to it. Absolutely. Thank you for mentioning that. Okay. Okay. Last Last video. video. Matthew chapter 6, verses 33 and 34. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. 
Jesus said, do not worry. You know, in verse 25 of this chapter, he said, do not worry. In verse 31, he said, do not worry. Again, in verse 34, he said, do not worry. Now, if Jesus says something once, you should never, ever forget it. If he says it twice, you need to write it down, tape it on your bathroom mirror. If he says it three times, get it tattooed somewhere on your body. Do not worry. And he said, don't worry about tomorrow. There's enough trouble in every day so that you don't need to worry about tomorrow. It's as if God has put a 24-hour fuse in our, heart, in our heart. You know, I had an air conditioning unit on one of my homes that uh, we lived in many years ago, and that the fuse would always blow out. There would be a surge of, of electricity, a surge of power, and it would cause the fuse to blow. It was overloaded, and I was always having to replace this fuse on the air conditioning unit. And so there's this 24-hour fuse in our heart that God has placed there. And if you'll just bring your troubles to God each day and cast your cares on Him daily, God will give you the grace to deal with it. But if you worry about tomorrow, today, you're putting a 24-hour load, I mean, rather a 48-hour load on a 24-hour fuse and something's going to blow. It may erupt in your marriage. It may cause your health to break down. It may erupt in depression or some other thing may happen. And some listening to me right now, you don't just worry about tomorrow, today. You worry about next week and next month and next year, and you're putting such a huge load on the fuse of your heart that something is going to blow somewhere in a bad way. Listen, cast your cares on God. He cares for you. Jesus said, do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. Put his kingdom first. Get your priorities in line. And he promises that all the things that you are tempted to worry about, He'll see that the things you need are added on to you. So listen, don't worry about tomorrow, today. Friend, God has grace for you today. And when tomorrow arrives, He'll have grace for you then. In Jesus' name, do not worry. Discussing. Mm -hmm. God is always in control. Yes, he is. He's a wonderful God. It's not for us to mm -hmm. think about what happens mm -hmm. tomorrow. It's not for us to think about what happens in the next five minutes, mm -hmm. because as long as we have our faith, we know that God is always going to be with That's us. Right. Because God not only is good, and but he is God. He doesn't make mistakes. He mm -hmm. knows the past. He knows the future. But I actually came up with some other things that we could do. Okay. Um, some other things we could do is write several scriptures on cards, especially with promises, and uh, read them several times a day to encourage yourself. The other thing is to make a Thanksgiving list, seven things that you're thankful for. And then when you pray, thank God for those. And um, during the next week, add another, add another seven things that you're thankful for. And then by looking at God's words, by reaffirming your thankfulness, to God, you will be blessed. Absolutely. We're training our mind to get out of those pathways of negativity, those pathways of hateful thoughts. And we're training the mind to grow spiritually, to grow in more and more in love with Jesus, more in love with God, and trusting and relying on Him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, Bobby, this has been a great series. It has I been. hope you all have been enjoying this. Um, this is the end of our anxiety uh, discussion. But we would like for you to join us next week as we conclude our mental health series uh, this mm -hmm. month. And we will be discussing addiction, which ties all in uh, with with our mental health. With us, all the topics. That's true. So we definitely want you to join us next week at 11 o'clock uh, in the morning and again at 7.30 p.m. Um, next Thursday evening. And don't forget your questions, please. We need yes. your questions. Yes, please. We need to know where you are. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you have any additional questions or if you have um, a prayer request, please go to either one of our websites. You can go to Ephesus website at esdac.org or to Fairhaven's website at fairhavensda.org. Amen. Thank you for joining us again. Have a good evening. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye now.